Hello, this is Joseph Carlson, and this is episode 126 of Gaming with Grief, and this is my Dark Alliance review. But before we get to that, I just want to remind you guys that this podcast will hit my website, www.gamingwithgrief.com, Monday morning at 7 a.m. Go there, leave a comment, let me know what you think of the show, or you can go to gwgpodfellows at gmail.com, write me an email, again, let me know what you think of the show, or you can subscribe to the podcast and uh, Apple iTunes or the Google Play Store, uh, leave me the likes, the shares, the subscribes, all that kind of stuff, or you can find me on Twitter at Just Little Joe. Um, I will try to get better about uh, promoting this episode. But this is basically just uh, that game that came out on September 21st uh, of this year, Dark Alliance. It's by Wizards of the Coast and took games. Um, my wife and friend gave, my friend Martin, we gave like an initial impression uh, of when we played it. Uh, we talked about what we liked and didn't like. We beat the game and this is our fuller review of the game after we completed it. And we did not like the game, so spoilers for our review. But this is us just talking about it more in depth. So enjoy the conversation. I'm recording. Back to that again. We're back to the Dark Alliance thing. Yeah, so... But there won't be any glitches and... In- Right, there'll be no glitch. Well, there may be some, but not many. Let's be honest. So, yes, we've we've all uh, beaten Dark Alliance. So, yay us, right? It's all good. Is it, it though? I was thinking about it, and I was like, "That's time in my it life." Was that I get back. It was luck. It was luck. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, okay, so I guess the way to phrase this is: Let's start with all the complaints, uh, because there is some good things about the game. Uh, and I want to end with the good stuff. So this is going to be a long podcast of us <laughs> talking about what is not good about the game. So with that being said, uh, how we killed the beholder is that is that a good thing? Oh I mean, yeah, on accident. Bad. It it, rub, it yeah it rubber banded so bad with the connection I mean, that like I it had like on my screen it had maybe like. You know, three like a quarter of its health left, and then the end cutscene just started. I and mean, so, I think it worked out. I mean, it worked out great for us. Let's be honest; yeah, it all worked for, out great. For sure. But it uh, it was just weird how we were like, "Oh man, like this is really hot." Oh look, he's dead. Because <laughs> it was, yeah, it was the number one problem I think with the game is it, in general at the end when I thought about. It, I mean, with all the problems that we made fun of and everything, I think the thing that bothered me is it just never felt responsive. Like when I wanted to do something. You had to be patient for it to happen. And in right. an action game, that's the worst thing, in my opinion. Like, you, when you, when I hit my axe button as Bruner, when I hit my light swing button, I don't want to wait for the, you know, for him to swing. And that felt bad, you know? Well, what's, what's worse about it is it'd be one thing if the enemies you were fighting also had that lag. But there wasn't. There was no lag for them. You could be mid-swing, like you're winding up, and you're waiting and waiting. It's just a basic attack. Mm-hmm. And, and you had to wait like a second or two before you swing while the enemies are just constantly mm-hmm. hitting you. Yeah. So the lag was only on the player's side, not the NPC side. I mean, I know that they tried to make it, uh, you know, based on obviously uh, Dritz and his companions, Caddy Bree, Bruner, Wolfgard. But it seemed like maybe, I don't know if Dritz ever used a bow. But it seems like there should have been like two ranged and two melee characters just to kind of offset, like depending on your party configuration, you know, if you wanted, um, you know, because it just seemed like we were like, I liked Bruner, you liked Wolf, you liked uh, Dritz. Dritz a lot because he was fast, and Martin, you liked uh, Wolfgar. Yeah. But then you have three melee characters where you're just like, okay, like the chef, that level with the chef. Oh my God. Where he does a lot of damage. Again, it's not responsive, so you don't know if you're going to hit him or not. And he would kill you in one hit. Like, that's... You're just like, okay, great. Um, I guess we're all... You know, we need Caddy Bree, but, like, she isn't fun to play. So what else do we do? We just have to hit our heads against the wall, reviving each other and all this stuff to do... Like, it just... It didn't felt... We just had to pick a corner right by the cliff where he couldn't get to us. And then just keep hopping over to that little corner. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And then it was like, I'm down, I'm down, I'm down. <laughs> yeah, because I went in and wanted to get one. People. Yeah, because yeah. I wanted to get one hit on him. You yeah. know. And then we all discovered you get into that thing of, oh, we're at this challenge rating. We're not getting good enough armor to move to the next challenge rating. 
So we just have to keep picking this challenge rating as we go. Even yeah. when you spent the resources, the shards, to upgrade to... You can only upgrade a piece of armor three times. When you spend all those shards to upgrade them, it really didn't increase that much your party standing. So you're kind of stuck in this loop of like, well, I can't get... I'm not getting good rewards, so I need to continue on this lower level, but then I'm still going to continue to not be rewarded yeah. with any good rewards. So it was like this mediocre loop of like, well, you know, and is Well, to be know. honest, if we were to even get to the higher level, would we really get that good of loot? Do you really think nah, that would happen? No, it wouldn't have been, yeah. Right. Well, and I don't know about you guys. It seemed like you guys were the same as me, is that, you know, I was running level 10 gear as a level 20, and there was yeah. nothing at level 20 that was dropping than my no. level 10 gear that I was using, which that would have helped out considerable i think if we could have gotten decent gear for our current level rather than yeah. running low level stuff while fighting high level opponents I yeah agree. yeah I and i mean we've all played multiplayer games before like the division mostly um what else do we we i mean there's others that we played where you're i like the actual gameplay loop and so you're incentivized just enjoying the loop and then getting loot where you're like, okay, I'm going to keep coming back. And obviously playing with my friends is really fun. Mm -hmm. But this time it was very much like I'm playing this just for my friends. So you've removed, you've removed the core gameplay loop that I like because it's slow and unresponsive. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've removed any incentive through loot. So really I'm just playing this to hang out with my wife uh, and my, my friend and to play this game, you know, in a right. game setting. So mm -hmm. uh, right. then it's like, oh, well, well, like you, uh, what did you end with with gold? You had a shit ton of gold because you couldn't buy anything from the shop. You couldn't buy gear from the shop. Yeah. So you ended up with a ton of money. I'm sure that there was like some skins I could have bought or something, but I was I like, mean, you know, do I really want to be purple? Like, it Why looks... even pick up money? <laughs> and we, yeah. were, we were playing on launch. Right, exactly. Why pick up money? There's no exactly. point. Yeah, we were all basically playing on launch Xbox Ones. And so from last gen, quote unquote, but since you can't buy new gen, I guess it's our gen now. But, um, right. It, there was no big, I wasn't, I never looked at anything in that game was like, wow. Cause it all looks kind of jagged in the same. I don't, I don't remember getting to one area where I was like, this looks way different than any other area. I mean, I understand no. but, we were in Icewind Dale, but like there can be caverns, there can be underground, but it was kind of lobby. Or snowy. Those were like the two things. Or there was poison right. somewhere. There was someplace. a lot of copy right. and pasting. Yeah, there was a lot of like, <laughs> yeah. we have this yeah. asset, we're going to move this asset over here, you know? Yeah, and the, the, the maps were kind of sort of set up the same yeah. way. Like there was some sort of roundabout way to get to the other side of the cavern with the chest. And then you had to go back that mm -hmm. way anyway to continue yeah. down to the route, you know? Um, yeah, it, it, it was. It definitely was monotonous. Um, and I'm really sad because the the books and the character of Dritz is so iconic. And I know I've talked about this before, but really excited just to be completely let down. Not oh. not like somewhat let down, but completely let down. Yeah, they, I they popped out the game and then they just forgot about. Yeah, it was it was out. it was amazing to me that uh, you know when I said hey they're making a Dark Alliance game, you're like well they already made like two of those, and I was like no it's new and it's about Dritz, and you're like, whoa, that's so cool, and you got really excited, yeah. and I was like, hey, and also it's on Game Pass, so we can just play it, don't have to worry about paying for it, and we can all hop on, you can have a three-member squad, that's perfect for us, and it was just like, every day we played, we're like, we gotta get through it, like, it, like the more and more, I mean, we would make each other laugh, like, why would you bind the button to revive someone and climb up a ladder <laughs> the same button, it seems like that's an oversight. Like, do you think in these caverns that are filled with spikes, they're ever going to want to climb up the ladder? No, they're not going to want to do that. What if they die? Oh, well, then you'll just revive them and you'll die too. Like, there's a lot of like... It's like, you know what? It's like just, just going down to like revive them. You're like, you know what? I'm going to climb down here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Well, it's just yeah. so funny because... Like, Am I going to do it? To I'm not going to do it. Find the ladder and die and they would fall down into the spikes. <laughs> At the very top of the ladder, it said revive yeah yeah and yeah so you would hit the x to revive and you're like no don't climb down that oh did, you know what never mind did you ever get the did either of you get the thing where uh you climbed up the ladder but i got hit on the bottom of the ladder so i had uh, no life but i climbed up to the top of the ladder <laughs> and then it went cocoon and i fell down the ladder and i was like you gotta be kidding me. I don't me. remember, like, but I mean, I it was, probably It was it was like, come yeah. on, man. Like, yeah. for the love of everything. That's what's terrible. funny, still what's funny is that we died more out of combat than we did. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we did. 
There was and, and there was there was so much lag sometimes that on my screen, Wolfgar, you would be running around and then it would be total party down. And I'm like, he's back there. He's yeah. running around. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Well, it's great because you start just start the level and then we run into the snowy ice whatever spikes area whatever, yeah. spikes and then we instantly die. Yeah. And then yeah. I'll revive you, Joe, and then I die. And then, yeah. you know. Yeah, and then there was another thing yeah. with progression where you you always want to feel slightly more powerful than the enemies, I think, in games. Just slightly. You know, like, it's going to be rough, but I'll get it, you know? And this always felt like I was fighting, like, something that was twice my level. Because it seemed like they would hit me once and I would die randomly, even when we got to the end game. And then yeah. I was still beating on them like it was the first level I ever went to. In the yeah. game, like, I didn't have that thing where I'd hit him so hard. I'm like, yeah. It was like, yeah, that critical did marginally more than the other things, you know? But it didn't... Yeah. Uh... Well, it's, it's even crazy, because, like, if you were to look at the damage you were doing, I mean, you're doing thousands, right? Well, for me, not thousands. I was doing anywhere between eight to, you know, 1,600 points of damage per hit. And their life was just going down just notch by notch. And then they hit you once and like a quarter of your life's gone. Or and they're half, just normal, yeah. normal grunts. Yeah, they're you know, goblins. They're... Like that you would yeah. and they look the same as the goblins in the first level you went into. So it wasn't like, oh, that's a magic user. So obviously. There are he's quite gonna... a few areas that we were running into and it was over and over. Yes. It was like a groundhog. And then basically. and then we realized that <laughs> yes. if, yeah, then we realized like if 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 the party leader died, then they started the whole level over. But if mm -hmm. one of you was alive and could revive the other person, then you could start back from where they were or whatever. So yeah. it was like this horrible gaming of the system, literally, where we were like, okay, no, just stay alive for like a minute. I'm almost back in. And then, you know, I'll revive. Just run around, run around. Okay, okay, good, good, yes. good. I'm back in. Okay, we're all in, you know. And uh, yes. I, I will big, give a big shout out to Kevin, though. Kevin's pretty amazing. Uh, <laughs> Bad man. Good guy. Um, <laughs> Kevin. MVP. He's my favorite. Yeah, well, actually, it was like one of the last bosses. His name is Kelvin in the game, but... Um, yeah, another thing I want to talk about, which is really weird... Well, not weird, but... So, Marvel Games, uh, they got a... Um, I don't know. They got a new games division, and what they did instead of... They used to make their own games, but then they realized, like, hey, why don't we just find developers and give them our IP? So, like, Insomniac... Did Spider Man, um, Square Enix did Avengers. Um, what is it? Idos Montreal is doing a Guardians of the Galaxy game. Uh, uh, Insomniac is doing Marvel Spider Man Two, and they're also doing a Wolverine game. And so, my thing is, why isn't Wizards of the Coast going? Hey, we need to find like an Insomniac or a Sucker Punch or somebody really good and just say, use our IP. You know, because I saw a development video with this team and they were really small and they were like, yeah, we kept pitching the idea and kept pitching the idea and they said no. And finally they relented. And it's like, yeah, I mean, is this going to be the one guys, you know, because they all played it and they know, you know, it's like and yeah. some, some of the people that I listen to on the DD podcast, they're gamers. And it's like, you played this and we're like, and I almost felt like on the podcast, they had to do the least amount to promote it. And then they never talked about it after it launched, you know, like I got to promote this thing because I work at the company that's somewhat developing it or promoting it yeah. and then I'm done, you know, and you're just like, all right. So, but I, I, I wonder, I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you, I mean, shouldn't, I, I would think wizards who's owned by Hasbro. I found out, don't you think Hasbro and wizards should go to somebody and say, Hey, take RIP, do something amazing with it. You know, finding developers that they like. Absolutely. I don't see why not. I mean, there's a lot of talent out there, even the ones that do stuff in their basement. So, I mean, it doesn't even have to be big talent. No. It could be like a mediocre talent. And I think they would have done better <laughs> than what we we played. Um, but they in the in the game developing, I mean, I just don't understand why they, they dropped the ball on something so big, so iconic of a, of a game. Of IP, yeah. Yeah. It, I wish they would have done something better. Um, yeah, and I think this is the third time Drix has ever been come about in a game. And uh, the two times before that, he also bombed. The game bombed. And so this would be the third time. So he's got two strikes is what you're saying. Yeah, they're, they're, 0, they're 0 for 2 or 3 right now. It's, <laughs> it's, it's bad. Pro, yeah. It's bad. It's, yeah. it's so bad that when you got gamers playing it going, this is 
this is horrible, yeah. you know? And the reason why we're playing is because we're having such a good time with each other. Well, we're just making you know, how many good. times do we yeah. play it and go, honestly, if it wasn't for you guys... Oh, like every no time. Way. Like every time we log That's on, it's like... That's the only reason yeah, the, the was only, us making fun of each other. The only, the the only, only reason, reason. Yeah, the only reason we logged on was like, thank God you're here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think? What do you think? Maybe you do you guys. think they... Do you think they should have done that? Do you think they should have gone to somebody and said, hey, just take this and do what you want? Because it seemed, it really seemed like this company begged them instead of them being... I mean, they could have, but, uh, you know, yeah. would they, though? Yeah. And I think, too, some of that is um, people uh, just understanding games and stuff. Like, uh, the people that did um, XCOM, which is like a strategy turn-based game that is like all the rave they did XCOM and XCOM 2. Yeah, they did X the invasion game. Right, they did Alien, they did XCOM 2 as well for Axis. Uh they said that Marvel approached them cuz they said we love uh XCOM. We play it all the time and we think you should take the Marvel license and make a strategy game. And they were like they approached us meaning that people in Marvel understood enough about games to be like we need to go to them. We want a strategy game. They did yeah. XCOM and won awards, it made tons of money. Let's go to them. And I think yeah. that there's someone in Wizards that, like, they need to have people just going, yeah, I love games. Let's try to find developers that, uh, you know, really speak to our IP, you know? Like, they have phone games, like the Idle Champions, where you just run along. It's like a, you don't really have to tap much. I don't know. It just right. seems like they, they it, it, just, it just, it's like, what are, you, what are you guys doing? Like, you have all the, like, I just bought on sale the Arts and Arcana ephem Ephemera box set, which is, they reprinted everything that D and D made when it started, and it was like forty dollars, and it's this big box set, and they literally reprinted all the maps that Gary Gygax made. So mm -hmm. it's like you go through the history of D and D, and in twenty twenty four, D and D is turning fifty years old. So that's wow. an amazing amount of history that you're just like, well, I mean, do whatever you want. It's like, no, man, no, no, don't do that. Like, go find people that you're like, yes, you know, we love your stuff. Please do something with RIP, you know? Oh, for sure. For sure, you know, and then, and then I mean, uh, the R.A. Salvatore, uh, the guy that did those stories, Bob. I mean, if he's a if he's anything like a gamer and he was to see that, uh, I, I wouldn't, you know, I would want to know what he thought. I mean, he's devoted tons of hours in writing like, these yeah, books. Like, yeah, 20 years of his life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's amassed a amount of, good amount of money, I would assume, from these stories. And then you see somebody take this and just... Just, just completely bombing. It was really bad. Like the everything, and there were some patches, you know. And you were thinking, oh, you know, they maybe they're gonna patch and they're gonna do something with like the lag, um, or maybe they're even gonna get a store, <laughs> you know. And, and oh yeah, that. then we can actually buy some good gear. Yeah. Yes, add some items yeah. to the store, or or something. But and I think there was only there was like two or three patches and and didn't fix, mm -hmm. it didn't fix anything. Yeah, I mean that that's yeah. my thing with um, like Marvel's Avengers, like. I like Marvel's Avengers. I understand it's not a 10 out of 10. But, like, when they add a skin to the store and they're like, hey, it's only a couple bucks, I'm like, yeah, like, of course I want Cap to look like that. Like, they got the look from Infinity War in that game, you know? And it, it's a 6 out of 10 game, but I'm like, when that skin goes on scale, I'm buying that. You know, like, right. it looks amazing. If you got in and they're like, hey, remember this look from this comic of Dritz or whatever? Like, that's going in the game. That'd be a good way to incentivize people. Like, man, I want Dritz to look like that, you know? Or I want I want Wolfgar. That skin looks cool. Yeah, it's a dollar or whatever. I'll buy it, you know? Instead of like, yeah. well, we're... Eh. Like, yeah. Well, can you guys think currently... Um, we can go back even to the 360 if you wish. But can you guys think of currently any game that you've played between now and the last five years that lagged this bad with the backing of a major studio not like martin chicks underground garage video gaming company i mean if you a, make a, a gaming company studio. you have to name it that you have to name it yeah. <laughs> underground garage I can't think of it's anything. like the long sign <laughs> i can't think of anything just loading into the game itself oh. takes forever oh. yeah that, it's... that's ridiculous that's the thing I heard. Even on PC, it wasn't much better. And you're like, with the processing power of a PC, you can't get it to run much better. Yeah, than I can't anything. think I of like, any other game yeah. really. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. Really bad. And, and and some of the things that were so unclear is remember you had that power move, right? If you did a if it said if you did successful attacks and then you held the X button, you can do a massive power move. Mm -hmm. I I I you kept telling me how to do it, and I'm like, are you sure? Because, like, it's not well, working. I would press the button and nothing really... Yeah. 
would happen. Yeah. And then I would hold X down and I'd be like, I asked Carla, did you hold X down? She's like, I don't know. I just something. <laughs> exactly. I, I willed it into existence it's and like, I, I press, dropped the shoulder on the guy. Like, I don't know what I did. Press Y and B, which I did. Oh, yeah, yeah. As well. Nothing. Yes. Yeah. Nothing. I, I did that, but I held it down and they were dead by the time I my axe hit yes. the ground. You're like, okay, well, there, I just wasted this. Yes. Yeah. And the thing about the Y and B, because it's, it's, you do that because, um, I think like one of your fellow people, they did like a counterattack or something and you were near them. So if you did the Y and B and it, it, remember on the screen, it made the, the Y and B flashing symbol, which means, you know, yeah, do your Y and B, Y and B, Y and B, Y and B. Uh, when you got it to work, it actually took one of your special Y powers away because everybody had two oh, Y powers. Oh, I didn't notice that. Were. Yeah, if you were able to accomplish it, um, you it took one of your Y powers away, and then you'd have to wait for that whole cooldown to start all over again. Oh. And you're like, this wasn't, this was horrible. It was this, not worth the. It was not worth the effort. Which basically yeah. sums up the whole game. <laughs> it sums up the whole game. This is not worth the effort. It, um, it sums up the whole game. I mean, the only thing I'll say positive, well, not the only thing, but I will say some positive about the game. I did like, like we said, the level layout was samey. I think the environments looked the same, but how they hid secrets and things, I did enjoy that. Like how mm -hmm. you would have to, like, Carla was really good with Dritz where she'd go in a corner and find like a treasure chest. And I'm like, right. where'd you go? And she's like, oh, I had to go back through here and I sneak back through here and I find a chest. Like all that felt rewarding to look around, you know? Yeah. So even though I wasn't having fun with enemies hitting me, at least you were going off like finding stuff using your treasure nose or whatever. That's that my OCD. Yeah. Well, she was like, I my treasure check OCD that. nose. Yeah. I got to check. I got to check the corners. <laughs> like that felt really good. And I thought some of the puzzles were just hard enough. Yeah. That it was rewarding when you completed them, but you didn't have to look anything up. So it kind of yeah. like was on the line of like, okay, this is good. And some of the bosses looked cool, but the fights weren't great. I thought the music was pretty good. Yeah, the the music was. You know, good. The, the choir in the yeah. beginning that yeah, was the, doing the, acapella, the chanting yeah. and stuff like that was pretty good. You know, but it had this weird like uh, metal energy where like in the I don't know if you saw any of the promotional stuff, but there there was like these ogres playing like a version of like a bass and stuff and it was supposed to be like a heavy metal version of dark alliance one of them gets thrown in a volcano and he sticks his middle finger up before it burns you know before he gets dropped oh, in this... I mean, we we did that remember um we we fought i don't know if it was cookie but when he was yeah, dying sure. he fell in the fire when he was dying he brought up his middle finger yeah. out of the fire and we we're like oh yeah <laughs> and, and and it's crazy too because like the um Joe Magniella did the voice of uh, Wolfgar, so he was Wolfgar in it, and he's a really well-known actor, and he plays D&D, &D too. Um, okay. He probably, I mean, obviously he goes in there, I don't know if he plays video games, but he went in there to do voice acting, and he was probably like, yeah, this is great, I want to be Wolfgar, I, you know, because he said he was a fan, and then, like, to sit down and play the game and go, oh, I didn't even do myself justice, like, you know, to be yeah. like, this is so unresponsive, like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so with that being said, um... I, I will say that uh, how we beat the Beholder, you know, we fought him over and over. First of all, he was a sadistic Pac-Man, right? Uh, yeah, he would, yeah, he With all up. the powers that Beholder have, you know, they have like levitate, and mind powers, et cetera, et cetera. Death rays. And, and, um, he would all, that was his main attack is that yeah. he would, he would just turn into a sadistic Pac-Man yeah. and he would try to bite yeah, you like you were was, yeah. the ghosts. And it was funny. So he bit me off the cliff. And I fell off the cliff, and he came down off the cliff after me. Is that how we and beat? That's how we beat him. Okay, I I didn't know that. That is you. Yeah. You sort of unintentionally sacrificed yourself. I, know. <laughs> I got this guy. <laughs> like, what? Right. I was like, I was swinging. I was like, yeah, and he hit me off the cliff, and I'm like, again. And then he came down after me, and it goes. He he's like, Hugh. oh like, yeah, he had the <laughs> yeah, they had the cinematic where he like flies away and then yeah, dies or whatever. I'm yeah. like, wow, how so, did we do that? Yeah. With that being said, did you guys have a favorite boss that we fought? Um, I like the big chef dude just because he looked ridiculous. He did look very ridiculous, even though it was, it was probably the most frustrating boss fight. But yes, he was pretty good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like the design of Icewind. Mm -hmm. I thought she looked really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I it, obviously the lag was really bad and everything, but I do like how she 
like how how she came down and like swooped up back up. Like I thought that was all really cool. She looked pretty imposing, like bigger than us. Obviously, you don't want to you don't want to drag into land and go, "What's up there, little guy?" You know, she was obviously big enough. That mm-hmm. was good. I can't. Kevin was good. Uh, he was big big into hockey. That Kevin he had his skates on. Yeah. He was ready to go. What about you? What did you? So I would say Kevin or the likeness of him because remember uh, they skated around like they were uh, hockey players, but he had like snow boots on. But the funny <laughs> thing about Kevin, remember he would wind up in soccer kick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that he, like he would kick. kick. That was his it, big it did thing. so <laughs> much just... damage. It did so much damage. <laughs> it was so funny though because he's just like it was like the laziest. I ain't got nothing left. Soccer kick. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Kick you. It was so. <laughs> He would wind up though. That's just it. He would telegraph it, and for some reason, with the lag and everything else, you would you could move out of his way sometimes, and he would kick you, and you're like, "That's kind of funny." Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah he was probably my favorite. I mean, I, I don't. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel bad. Like, I I do, I do want to play more games like this. I like the action mm-hmm. part of. It would be interesting if they just took the idea of D and D. Hey, this is a story because all the ones I've seen lately have been isometric, so you're pulled far out. There's a lot of dungeon crawling, which is fine. But I want a third-person action game like this, and maybe you make your own adventure, and mm-hmm. they come out with just like D and D when you buy an adventure or a module. They go, "Hey, we recreated um, the Icewind Dale saga. Uh, log in, create an adventure, and go through the module." You know, and you'd be like, "That'd be cool." And if it was really responsive, I think that would be great. You know, yeah. and um, obviously they're not going to stop making games. I think what really helped with Census is on Game Pass. I'm sure Microsoft paid money to have it on the service, and they're an independent developer, and Wizards kind of signed off on it. So they were like, well, we got paid, and people yeah. got to play the game. But, I mean, maybe maybe it's something they were using old, like an old engine or something, and they're like, hey, we want another shot at this, but, you know, we have new technology. Now, I don't know. I don't know what's happening with them. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I do not recommend. No. Even on Game Pass, we were like, really? Like, for a Game Pass game, man, like, you know. We're like, when's the next thing? Absolutely. Yeah, like, when's the next thing we're playing? That And that's the worst sign, I think. It's not so much that I haven't thought about Dark Alliance since we beat it. I've just thought about it because we're going to record this podcast. But I think just while you're playing it, you're like, what am I going to play next? And that's like the worst thing you can say about a game. When you're thinking about another game, when you're playing, you're like, this game sucks. I want to play another game. Because we were doing, I think, two levels when we got to play. We were doing two levels. And then... Yeah, uh, two you acts said, hey, out of a three-act mission or whatever, yeah. Yeah, and then you were like, hey, uh, Back for Blood is coming out uh, <laughs> October 11th. And then you said, but until then, Chaos Bane. And then we're like... Okay, well, how many levels do we have left? And you're like, well, I think six acts. And you're like, so three more days? We have three more days? Yeah, yeah. Like, we were, yeah, that was okay. bad. It was just like doing the math. And then like we'd have one late night where like the chef, where you're like, we're only going to get one act done tonight. Yes. Darn it. Like, yeah, that means, that we, that so means we're long. behind. And it felt like I, I, do, I definitely do, uh, all the gaming podcasts I listen to, I definitely do feel bad for them when they're under a deadline. Like, we weren't under a deadline, but, like, our experience with the game and then just imagine being alone or maybe playing mm-hmm. it with people, but then being like, hey, you got to be done by this date and then running into a boss encounter when you're like, this took me four hours to get this done and I have 20 hours to play this game and I burned a quarter of my time beating this one boss, you know? Yeah. And that's, like, the worst. You're like, oh, I definitely... I feel their pain a little bit when we were playing this where I'm like, mm-hmm. got it. A lot of a lot of reviewers out there got to be given really crap games where you're like, well, I have X amount of time to beat this and crap, you oh, know. So, sure. so, so my my opinion of the overall thing is that don't don't get sucked into the hype of Icewind Dale and Dritz and his companions. Um, if you see it, you really do need to just walk on by because the game really is not worth it. No. Um, it was great to play with friends, but it halfway through it, it really did. It felt like you just said it, it felt like work. a job it's struggling. that. It's it's Tuesday and you have until Friday. Yeah, and you, <laughs> you realize that I have four more days of this. It was another it job. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it was so bad. Yeah. It really honestly was bad. It, it 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 saddens me because it is such a great great story and this game did not tell the story 
properly. Yeah, I mean, even when, when I wasn't skipping cutscenes with you guys, I'm like, what? Okay, so Icewind is back. <laughs> and that's all I remember until we fought Icewind. I'm like, but she... Okay, I guess we're killing her. <laughs> like, I don't... I, right. I know there was the helm and the guy wanted the power, but then he died. I mean, baby, what do you what do you think about uh, your your overall? Uh... I wouldn't play it again. <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoyed playing it with you guys. Yeah, right. that was the best part of the whole thing was us getting stuck in places, yeah. dying unnecessarily in the beginning of levels. It was just really fun. Yeah, I, I yeah, <laughs> it was a real good time. Real good time. Just getting. I mean, it was other you know other than that. Uh, I mean, aesthetically, I feel like some areas were pretty, pretty cool looking. You yeah, know, yeah. some of the choir, you know, they really practice hard, you know, they perform. <laughs> yeah, again, some of the, you know, there is aspects that are good that I, I think maybe, again, I think the number one sin of this is, is it's not responsive. And, yeah. and if, it was, if it was more responsive, I probably could have forgiven some of the stuff. Because if it's more responsive, you feel more engaged, you know, and it, it just more and more... Like, there was lag and like you were rubber banding or it would say total party wipe and either of you were running around. You know, yeah. that stuff just slowly like pulls you out of the game. It's I will good. say there was that one point where we were jumping on cliffs or something. We were both trying to jump and we both kept dying. It, yeah, and then you yeah. kept respawning and I was looking over the hill watching you guys and you're like, no. And Carla was on the microphone like, no. And like I, uh, We yeah. were stuck at the bottom. We were like, this yeah. is just crap. <laughs> yeah, it was like, not... Yeah. Joe's like, what are you doing? Yeah, like, we're trying to make our way to you. It was like, like a parent no, watching. It was like it. a parent watching his kids. Like, this isn't. <laughs> what are we? What is he doing? It, it was so funny. Well, even like you said, it, it would be one thing that if uh, there was no lag or virtually no lag, and you know you were just doing your best to try to make it through the level. Because there's nothing wrong with a hard game. Right? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with fighting through the game. Yeah. Um, there was only one time where you upped the difficulty of the game, and when we finished that level, we were like, it was the very first level, actually. We, were, we felt rewarded. Yeah. And then, um, that was after it. Like the second or third one, it was just like yeah. one level above. And by, by what? Two, three hundred points. Yeah. Not only that, I had I had a sixty point split one time between our party level and the next challenge rating, yeah. and they would like one hit us. And you're like, it should be hard, but not this hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we should hit and be like, oh, I feel it. Like, let me go back and try to use, you know, arrange something or whatever, or, you know, hit and run. But it's like, no, you're dead, you know? Well, like, especially when they're low level. Oh, know, the enemies, goblins, yeah. And they like, hit you once, and you're, yeah. you're like, you gotta be kidding yeah. me. And then the way well, it's funny. Yeah, when everything respawned, when you die, you're like, oh, we gotta do this again, you know? But then you could run past everybody, so it's like, it didn't matter. Like, yeah. Do you guys ever get those, um, what are those achievement uh, info, like when you're um, in idle on your oh, Xbox? Oh, yeah, 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 says, yeah. I get yeah. those from time to time. It's like, uh, Dark Alliance, you can get this special oh, achievement close. if you beat everything you're... on like, Veteran, and I go, no. No. <laughs> yeah, because I got the ones of nope. like, get all the skills, get to level 10. I'm like, that's not happening. We're not doing this. We're... <laughs> I think as soon as I think as soon as we beat it, we were on chat on the Xbox party, and we all del like I deleted it. I was like, I'm removing this from my. I'm we all deleted it. Yeah, I'm uninstalling this from my. So I guess that's our review of the game. When we finished it, we uninstalled it, and we haven't thought about it since we played it <laughs> until you, now. Until yeah. Joe was like, "Hey, let's do a podcast." Yeah. And then you're like, "Darn it, I don't want to do a podcast." You're like, I once. remember all those stressful moments. Yes, I don't want to think about that again. Yeah, all right. Well, uh, I will download Back for Blood soon, Marty. Don't worry, and we will play together soon. Again, already downloaded it. Yeah, she's going to play this. I think that's all we have to say for Dark Alliance. But, uh, yeah, I'll record the outro for this later. But, yeah, I mean, I guess that's it. I guess we're done. It's unfortunately, I mean, should we pour one out for it? Should we pour some ale? I don't know what, how are we going to do no, that? No, we should pour some ale on it. <laughs> <laughs> do we have and to collect like 15 beer mugs before we can <laughs> log out? I forgot about Yeah, so that was it. That was our um, kind of spoiler filled talk of uh, Dark Alliance. I guess if you like spoilers or care about spoilers for a game um anyway yeah we i mean to be clear i kind of said a little bit in that review i don't miss you know mean any ill will towards turk games i just wish that wizards of the coast instead of it, it did seem like in the lead up to that that they were that team was kind of begging to uh make the game as opposed to wizards of the coast going to people and say please mark a game we like your games 
And, uh, yeah, I hope we see more games in the future. I mean, D&D is obviously a rich tapestry to make any kind of game. So, um, anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. That's, that's it for this week. I uh, want to remind you guys that this podcast will hit my website, www.gamingwithgrief.com, Monday morning at 7 a.m. Go there, leave a comment, let me know what you think of the show. Or you can find me at gwgpodfellows at gmail.com. Go there, write me a line. Uh, let me know what you think of the show, how I can improve, how you heard about the show. That would be good. Um, or you can go to um, Twitter. I'm at Just Little Joe. Or you could subscribe to the podcast on Apple iTunes and the Google Play Store. So go there. Let me know what you think of the show. Again, give me the likes, the ratings, subscribing, all that kind of stuff. And that's it for this week, guys. And I will talk to you again next week. Bye. Thank you.